how many women post having children believe that their sex lives have ended, that that's the end of it and we settle for it being that way because we're so caught up in all the stuff that is required of us as parents. That is why this conversation with Tamika Wilder, my sex expert on the couch, was so enlightening and refreshing because it reminded me and us that we don't need to settle. In fact, we never settle because if we're settling, there is resentment and unhappiness and disappointment and frustration. In our conversation today, we talked about how to reawaken our sexuality, our eroticism and pleasure. And the first thing we need to do is to look at the beliefs and the conditioning, the dogma, how we've been raised, what religion we've been raised in, and what beliefs we're carrying in our lives in order to then know which ones we want to take forward and which ones we want to let go of. She looked at ways to expand our experience, embody a different experience with different, a different set of beliefs. And when we do that, we expand, we become more vast in our experience. She talked about the responsibility of pleasuring ourselves first and not relying on our partners to do that. But when we can honor and pleasure ourselves and give ourselves the time, we can then ask that and communicate that to our partners. Also the power of letting go. That was a big one that came up numerous times and so, so much more. If you enjoyed this conversation, I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel. And of course, please continue to tune into the conversation for so many more nuggets from this wise, wise woman when it comes to all things sexuality and pleasure. <laughs> Hello again. Hi. I'm particularly excited about this conversation because you know that I see you. Well, I probably haven't used these words, but you are the queen of shaking things up mm. when it comes to sexuality, pleasure, eroticism, and everything underneath that umbrella. That's what I think is so powerful, is that you get me questioning the things that I've had, that I've had running as acceptance yep. and just is. Yeah. So I want us to launch straight into that. Awesome. When do we get conditioned? How have we been conditioned? How are we living as suppressed yeah. sexual beings? Most of you, us. Yeah, a lot of us, most of us, and, mm. and all of us in some way because it's difficult to actually live in our culture as a fully sexually expressed being all the time because, you know, there's, it doesn't necessarily feel safe to do, to, to do that. But um, you said a cool thing before which was like have we always been suppressed or shut down? And <clears throat> obviously no. You know, when when I want to use examples for where the most eroticism and playfulness and full expression lives, I always think back to children mm. and the innocence that is alive inside of that that life force inside of them and their sexuality and their play, the way that they wiggle and move and dance and scream and, you know, that innocent sexuality mm. has been with us <clears throat> um, in our childhood and we're born with it. And then... Our parents, bless them, and society um, comes along and we get taught to do life properly. Mm. We get taught to close things up and posture ourselves in a certain way. We start walking and talking and acting and experiencing life through the rules and parameters of our environment. So depending on whether you were in an environment that was quite expressive and, and shameless and liberated, um, or whether you came from an environment perhaps that was laid with lots of religion or dogma mm. Um, mm. and extra bits of shame or conditioning that told you that it's best to be a good girl or a good man mm. or a good boy and on top of that comes don't wiggle like that, don't touch yourself like that, don't say those things, be quiet please, sit still please and in comes our conditioning, which is to get small. And so that's it. And so because we don't know any better, because it happens when we're kids, we don't even know that that was any other way. We continue to live that way until somebody like yourself comes along and plants the seed and you, you hear something that resonates so very deeply inside of you that you know that what you're speaking is the truth, but you've forgotten your truth. You've forgotten your that innate 
um, playfulness and that 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 sensuality and and who you are as as a fully expressed being. Yeah, yeah. And usually, like for a lot of people I talk to, we have stories from our teenage years where we recognise, you know, our hormonal landscape changes, our um, desire to become sovereign beings and to really express um, that relational dynamism and love and physical connection with somebody in our teens. The bits that feel really good and feel really expressive and like, yeah, I'm I'm into this, bang up against all the things that you're told as a child Mm. and then you enter a a realm of your adolescence in confusion. Um, Why does this feel so good but I feel like it's inherently wrong or bad or I'm flawed if I want to experience my body in this way or, you know, my energy in this way with this person? And teenage, like going back to teenagehood, that's hard because for anyone that was active or sexually active, um, because that was what was innately in that them to be experienced. You're right. This the shame. Yeah. The shame that then comes as a result of that, which what like to me just suppresses even more so who we are. Yeah, that's right. I think it's interesting, like, we, I do talk about shame a lot and I think for different people it does mean and, and feel like different things. So to go a bit deeper into ways in which um, shame and taboo in this sense of hiding our sexuality mm. comes through, it's about the fact that there are no, there's not a lot of um, normalising of, of all of the aspects of our sexuality inside of current societal structures. So it means that... The confusion is just like, am I normal? Is this okay? Mm. Am I allowed to want that? Am I allowed to say that? How do I talk to this person? How do I talk about what my body enjoys? How do I, how do I? Our adolescents have so many questions because there's nowhere safe to put those questions. Mm. And the more that we internalise those questions, the more that shame builds and the more Mm. taboo and hiding and quiet builds. Um, So really, I, I mean... There's lots of remedies against that, but a lot of them would take changing deep structures inside of our culture, which... Inside of education and big, yes. That's right, yeah, which I would enjoy very much. (laughs) And you will in time. I can no doubt that that will actually occur because you're a change maker. There's no doubt about it. You're here to ruffle the feathers and for people to see beneath what they think they know. I've never thought of you like that, but of course you are a change maker. I knew that back in kinesiology days. Um, so, okay, so we're, we're going along sort of fairly, well, pretty suppressed for most of us, and we've normalised it, even though it doesn't actually make us innately happy because we're yeah. not in integrity with who we are. So how, like, I know a big part of your work is to, to support people in reawakening yeah. to connecting to their own sexuality and whatever that is and how they express that. So what, like, how, how does that even, how do we do this? Mm. There are obviously quite a few pieces to it and mm. depending on your past, depend, you know, will determine where you kind of start within this. But the first big piece is really looking at what beliefs you've, you've surrendered to inside of your sexuality and your sensual life force. What do you believe to be true about how you operate or how you're allowed to operate? Um, What values do you hold around sexuality? Are they even yours or are they your churches or your parents Mm. or a partner that you had when you were 19 and they said some really messed up stuff to you and all of a sudden you find yourself believing that, you know, Mm. 10 years later you're like, oh, I'm still holding on to that Mm. belief that, old mate, whoever gave me, <laughs> and I haven't <laughs> managed to shake that off yet mm. or create my own. Mm. So that's often where, you know, you start. It's like, what do I believe to be true? And are some of these expired? Um, and what is a new set of beliefs I can start breathing life into? Mm. <clears throat> and then the next part that's so important about can, when we want to cultivate new beliefs. Can I stop for a moment? Yes. Because I'd love for those people that are watching What are some of the beliefs, just, you know, some of the beliefs that present to you, and I know there'll be a a, a cast, a a vast array, but just so that people can identify with how that might, because they might not, I mean, most of us are unconscious of them. 
totally. So things like um, I'm not, I'm I'm not good enough. Like I don't look good enough. I'm ugly or wrong or bad or flawed. Um, not only am I, but my body is. Mm-hmm. My body's different. My body's flawed. Um, I don't smell good. Mm. My anatomy is weird. Mm. Um, <clears throat> if I really liberate my sexual expression, my whole life will change. I imagine that would be a big one, is it? That's a big one. That's a big one. And I can't sit in front of people and say that that's not true because quite often it does and it's always worth it. But it's a big challenging belief because it's like I don't know what will happen. That's another thing. I don't know what will happen if I find these parts of me that help me fully claim my myself and my sex. Um, <clears throat> big. What other beliefs? Uh, Communication. Like I, I, I'm just what comes through for me, I don't know if this is one, is I can't communicate I, I can't communicate or I can't want more. Yeah, I'm not allowed. So, yeah, I'm greedy or selfish mm. um, or self-obsessed and things like that because the narrative says you shouldn't prioritise this, this is a bonus, be happy with what you've got, you've uh, got two great children, you've got a family that loves you, you've got a house over your head, don't be so ridiculous. Sex is the last thing that you need to spend time looking at that is big and it's like oh yeah okay so this is actually and so i know a large part of the people that you work with a big part of your audience or pe- your client base are parent are mothers parents yeah parents and so which <laughs> so everything you you just speak about i i know from being a parent and i know from speaking to other women is that it does go it is not even a there are so few women that prioritize it so few and there is a complete settling it's like pre-children post-children yeah settle it's not it's settle and it's i've had that experience and i know so many it's so unhealthy and 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 no there's no joy totally totally, exactly and and whenever we settle on something we never actually that's not actually settling because there's a deep unrest, deep disharmony, mm. um, a um, resentment yep, and discontent and all of those things show up inside of our system in different ways. The, the rage and the um, frustration mm. and the stress that accumulates when you think that you're like, oh, stuff it, I'm just going to settle, this is, it's going to be okay, like I'll just be grateful for what I've got, I don't need to look at that, sexuality, whatever, it manifests in different ways. You're not actually ever settled. There's this little voice in the back of your head saying, this could be better, I could do something about this, or this is just not great. I really didn't think, a lot of people say to me, I didn't think I was going to be here. You know, I'm 42 years old, I've got this family, and I just never thought that this is the this would be the end. The end, I mean, that's sad, isn't it? The end. Yeah, because it kind of does, you know. For a lot of parents, it's it's ground. It's so much, mm. and so there isn't. I mean, yes, it's it can be joyful being a parent, but not for everyone. Yeah, yeah. And, and when they say the end, they mean the end of my kind of exploration, or you know, this is the way my my sexuality is now. Or this is how much pleasure I can access, mm. or how much sensation I've got, or I don't easily orgasm, or I don't orgasm at all ever or when I'm with my partner, it's fine, but I would love it if they could touch me like this and this and this, but I don't know how to say it. You know, I never thought that this would be me. That's kind of the. So there's a real acceptance that it is what it is. Uh, There's a version of acceptance, but also, but obviously then when they arrive in front of me, I'm like, well done because there was enough Mm. pain to have the impetus to arrive in, well, how can I explore making this a bit better than it is, you know? What a powerful place to be given that it is women post 
children that really yeah. ha do see it, for most of us, see it as the yeah. end. Yes. And so when somebody presents to you, let's go back, rewind, because I remember, yeah. I'm not always good at remembering where we, because we go off on tangents, but then we talked about, okay, so the first point is actually just discovering what are your beliefs running, what have you taken on that's yours or not yours, what actually is serving you, what do you want to carry forward? So that's the work that you do initially, or that's yeah. what you help uncover for, yeah. for people. And then it's about um, how do we learn to embody new beliefs because obviously we know that it's not enough just to have a new thought. We need to have a felt experience of what we want to create. So what is awesome about this realm of sexuality and eroticism is that it is one of the easiest things that we can get a felt experience of because we can cultivate those sensations ourselves. Whereas if someone's say, trying to manifest $10 million in their bank account and you get told, you know, create the belief, create the the thought first um that's a lot it's a lot harder i think it's a major gap it's a major gap but um accessing our, our sexual energy yeah it can be difficult and it's not a practice thing but there are very on body tactile practical ways in which you can breathe your sensuality to life inside of your body so i go from the beliefs work into right how do we build sensation into these beliefs and how do you build quick evidence for your um your life force energy in your body um and that's all about erotic embodiment using the somatic tools that we've talked about in our our last chats um yeah so can you give can you give a, a, an example of I don't know just uh, it's always I was like a like a live example of somebody that's presented and how you've worked with them to yeah so um, <clears throat> let's say for example one of the biggest pieces that a lot of people struggle with is is vocalizing and and the part of us that needs to really clear the cachet of our our throat and our sounding and that version of us. Mm. So, um, <clears throat> and that often means as well that you're underexpressed inside of your relationship. If there's something happening inside of um, something that's happening in the bedroom, you're not going to say it. You're going to find it difficult to find the words. You're going to feel choked up. And then after you be like, oh, I wish I just had have said a little bit higher, mm. a little bit to the left, you know. But we can't say these things. So um, mm. I would work that, with that person around opening up the throat, opening up the throat chakra, that communication. And it looks like finding ray, a range inside of the way that you express. So screaming, moaning, crying, breathing, humming, panting, like... Making animal noises. Making animal noises, all that kind of thing. And really mm. <clears throat> what all of the somatic tools are doing is changing your what you feel to be true about yourself and your identity and the way that you are, the way that you think you are. And I think we said this in, I can't remember if it was in the other chat as well, like around how um, used to these parts of our identity we get. I talk like this, I walk like this, I breathe like this, I dress like this, and we want to be so certain of who we are that we lose range. So part of the work in embodying new beliefs is about forgetting about who you think you are and letting parts of your identity dissolve so you can play on the spectrum of expression. And that gives you range. Mm. That somatic range, it gives you sexual range. Um, so vocal and voice is one of those things, breathing, moving, cracking your body open to feel things it hasn't felt before so the new beliefs have somewhere to pop into. Mm. I think having worked with you and working with you again is even from our last, um, last session was feeling a different experience of life. I'm yeah. feeling a different experience of things yeah. and I'm not even going to necessarily be able to vocalise how that is. I just know that. Yeah. And so and it's not just... It's not just in, um, it's in all relationships actually, but yeah. it's in how I feel about me and how I meet other people and how I meet my partner. And I know just going back to what you shared, and I think we have talked about this as well, is I think that's a big, that was a big part for me and, and still is, it's still a work in progress, is yeah. expanding that range of using my throat and expressing, communicating 
in a whole different, you know, vast array of, of tools that you, you talk about. But how that's opened me up to now communicate in phenomenal, I mean, phenomenal yeah. ways. Yes. To be able to yeah. say, this is what I would like. You know, this is what I need. It, it's, it's so powerful because all of it is to, well, for me, it's about gaining a greater, a deeper connection Yes. with the other person and I can do that when I'm accessing the parts of myself that are there and have always yes. been there and now I'm able to do it in a really safe space. It's, yeah. It's, totally. Yeah, and another thing that just comes to mind for me is how often people say when I really lent into my sexual expression and really owned um, my sensations and that, that erotic pulse, everything else fell into place. I found that my business grew. I found that I was able to finish writing that book. I found that I was able to, you know, have a conversation with my sister that I hadn't had in six months, mm. things like that, because life is relational. So whether it is your personal intimate relationship or you want to sell something, for example, you become more chameleon-like. You are less attached to that identity that makes you go, this is who I am, hi, do you mm. like me? And you're like, hey, who are you? You have a place to land inside of my range. Let's dance together. That's mm. what life becomes, this dance of range and comes with liberating your sex. Mm. <laughs> so, and it was just popped into my head, and I know you've, you've spoken about it over the years, you know, it's... Uh, I'm I going to be able to articulate it correctly. When I've asked you how you are and you're like you're this and this and that, you're all different, there's all these different aspects of self and I think for so long I was kind of limited. It actually is. I was limited, I'm this and that and that, but there was a vast, you would show up in all your vastness. Yeah. And so I never knew what version I was going to get. It was like, oh, there's Tamika, that's Tamika today. And, and so... That's what I'm experiencing actually being a, a friend and having you on the couch and working with you as well is your, the, your vastness is like that has expanded as you continue to do this work. Yeah, totally. And, and you might also call that like a window of tolerance. My window or the comfort zone gets, your comfort zone can get wider mm. and what you can tolerate and what you can hold and your um, bandwidth, you know, can get a bit wider. Because ultimately we are harnessing the power of our sensuality and the, the, the power of what happens inside of our body when we're in pleasure calms our nervous system and allows parts of us to rest so we can hold more. So I think that's part of, you know, if we talk about pleasure and we talk about what it actually feels like to be orgasmic or to be... Um, yeah, in sensation and in the present moment with sensation rather than in thoughts and in the head and in inquiry and, and cognition, um, I feel like that's where lots of the magic happens. So let's keep talking about pleasure because yeah. um, something when you were talking just then about the head and, you know, cognitive, and that's where I know something you talked about I was listening to yesterday was talking about performance anxiety Yeah, and how that, and I know it's a little bit off topic, but how that, and I think a lot of people will relate to that. Yeah. Do you get a lot of people that are actually that presents? Lots of people, yes. Performance anxiety shows up in all different ways, but the underpinning kind of truth of performance anxiety is that you're not in the you're not present. That's you why yeah. that's why it came through then. So you can't be in a place of receiving pleasure from yourself that's or right. another when yeah. you're well, it's more so when you're with another. Yeah. When you're in that state of am I doing this well? Am I moving right? Am I do I smell okay? You know, all of that. Am I, am I, am I? Do I look okay? Am I doing this right? Am I allowed to do this? Um, oh, am I taking too long? Mm. Oh, I need to please that person instead of me receiving. So, I mean, there's an art to receiving. And when you attune to the art of receiving in your body, you attune to the art of receiving everywhere. That's That's not a... <laughs> that's not a, I'm going to make a choice and I'm going to start receiving because I know I've been working on this for, not working on this, but this has been an unfolding. And we all do. Like it's, it's, end, like it's endless. We're always. So to give us, can you give us some tips, some tools, some, like what can well, we do? What can we do to, to. I guess if we stay with that thing around 
being in the present moment and actually, you know, if you're starting to do the beliefs work around I'm valid to receive, I'm worthy, I'm allowed to, I deserve this, it's my divine right to life is in this pleasure and in this sensuality, then you can practice inside of your connections with intimate partners or practice in your own self-pleasuring or masturbation around, well, you know, if I assign seven minutes every couple of days to giving myself a short, sharp orgasm with a vibrator, how could I maybe lengthen that out to a half an hour practice where I actually give my body more reverent touch, where I spend more time massaging my entire body or feeling my fingers on my skin, where I spend more time treating self-pleasure like a meditation. That is around training your body how to receive. How do I receive more time from myself, more touch from myself, more Mm. sensation? And from there, it's like, how can I receive the type of penetration that I want to receive from my partner? Oh, that's right. It's about me naming my needs. And if I'm working with the belief that I deserve it, cool, this is all starting to line up. I'm going to say, sweetheart, I'd actually love you to do it like this instead of tolerate, tolerate. Then you're being penetrated and you're receiving in the way that you want to and it has no choice but to change your field you have no choice but to you're aligning with things that you actually desire inside of your sensations then you're going to be aligning with things that you desire in other realms of life have i think i feel like i've heard that for the i'm sure you've shared that with me the many times before but i really got that then oh my god okay so when we're self-pleasuring when we're limiting that, like it's, then we're, we're not showing ourselves that we deserve our time. That's right. And we love, we want someone to touch us in a certain way. We love outsourcing the responsibility um, of our pleasure to somebody else. When we take full responsibility, we learn that actually I need to know to touch myself in the way that I expect a partner to, or I expect the world or universe to touch me. Then first it does start with me. I do need to come home. I do need to spend more time. I need to treat myself with the reverence that I want the world to treat me with. And I imagine for anyone watching, especially if you've been out of touch, out of touch, literally with your own, hands yeah and and out of touch with your sexuality that this is it could be this is an incredible opportunity to come back in touch and actually discover what it is that does feel good what it is that we do want to to nurture our bodies the way we as you said that we're looking um for another to to nurture us yes that's right a big thing that stops people is i don't know what i want i don't know what i like mm. And we're never going to know until we get curious and we commit to playing and exploring. I didn't know until I got willing enough to try things out, you know. You don't know and then do the thing. You've got to reverse engineer it. Yeah. You've got to try yeah. the things and you find out what you like. And what you don't and, like. Yeah. And there's also things inside of that where it's like, oh, I don't love that, but actually... If you can train, you can train your body to enjoy things. And this isn't about overriding your no. This is about, say, for example, with internal pleasure. A lot of um, women find it difficult to experience orgasmic sensations um, internally. There's loads of nerve endings in the clitoral head that, you know, we love. That's like full of pleasure. That's great. And I was someone who never orgasmed from internal penetration and I didn't particularly love it. But I learned to build new wiring there for pleasure. So it was about choosing it and going, okay, my intention is to build wiring to this part of my body. And then it's like, oh, I learned to enjoy that. And, oh, wow, look, now I have all sorts of orgasms, including eternal ones, you know. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. cool. So for anyone... Because I, I know when I did a tantric workshop last year with Emma Power, there were a number of people there that didn't orgasm. And I was like, wow, that, that I mean, I can't imagine the, what they would be experiencing and their partners yeah. would be experiencing. Totally. Um, but to remember that there's wiring, I love that, that, that yeah. we're rewiring it because it's being conditioned not to know how to experience it's like anything we need to give it familiarity and the only way for something to become familiar is to practice that's right practice to explore 
like muscle, building muscles. I can't mm. go and lift 100 kilos, but if I lift 9 and then 12 and mm. then 18, like I'll build up to it. My muscles work like that mm. and so does our pleasure. So does our orgasmicity. That's, that's how it works. And the piece around not orgasming at all, though, is, is our willingness to get out of our own head and get out of our way and let go of con- control. Control. Big part of that is surrendering control and and going. Oh wow, I'm allowed to experience this. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of people I talk to, it's like we are in environments where it does require us to be really in action, to be on our game. We're taking care of households. We're working. We're we're doing lots of active stuff, and it rem- it has us holding our shit together. You know. Mm. So and our ability to let go. It's intense. Our ability to let go when it comes to then experiencing our orgasmic nature is then tested because it's like everything in my day-to-day life says I have to hold on. Mm. I have to, you know, be strong. I've got to keep this thing together. And then you're telling me that when I get into pleasure, though, I've got to let go. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so yeah. what what... I imagine that's that's something that you have conversations with people you work with, like to actually help them, support them, move from that space into. I kind of think I know what I'm gonna, what you're going to say because I listened right. to enough of your stuff. But I'm going to give it, hand it over to you. What what would you be saying if I presented to you and I'm like, oh, that just because you know I I've come from being very very tightly controlled and still it's still an ongoing thing again. Mm. Um. <clears throat> first thing I would do is a lot of my things start like this because it's important to have your household on board. If you're someone in relationship Mm. and you're trying to work at something in private, you will sabotage. Yep. So the first thing I do is name it to your partner if you have one. Say, I'm going to start looking at coming into more surrender and I'm playing with this concept of letting go so I can experience more sensation in my body. Cool. They might not know what that means. That's fine. I don't care about that. You've said it. It's in the ether of your holding. So that means when I would rock up and say to you, right, you need to learn erotic embodiment now. You need to, like, get into your body. You need to do some dancing or some shaking or some laughing or some crying, that cathartic expression, and you're like, all right, I'm going to go do a 20-minute practice. The household is already, like, holding you to account. Mm. That's, yeah, the first thing I'll do. But, um, yeah, it's around giving yourself permission to um loosen up your body and I would say through I don't want to say dance but for someone who's never done any of this before um I would start with dance and I would start with dance not in like oh I'm gonna put on the radio and dance around while I'm you know cooking dinner it is set time aside go into your own space and connect with your body through dance. Um, Why are you laughing? Tell me. Oh, I'm laughing because it's just, it actually feels difficult to answer that question because I'm not sure who I'm talking to because there's like some people are always like, yeah, I do that. And then there's a whole set of other things. that Maybe give a couple of others. You would do next. But um, this thing around erotic embodiment is about finding the genuine ways that you enjoy connecting with your body um, and allowing different types of touch. So soft, gentle touch, fiery, rubbing kind of touch, slappy, you know, kind of earthing touch. Um, Yeah, building range around how you connect with yourself is the next kind of piece or another piece. Um, and I, did, I want to talk to that because I had that experience at that tantric weekend workshop that I did and, the, and the, she got us to pair up and do that and it yeah. was really liberating. Mm. Yeah. It was about working with somebody but I was we were essentially doing it to ourselves yeah. but using the energy of these different, uh, yeah, different, the, the fire, the grounding, the, um, I can't remember there was something something with, so, or was that fiery for solar plexus? Anyway, it was really yeah. It, it did. It it, it 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 got me out of here because initially I was like, I can't do this. This is hard. Um, but once I actually got into the field experience of it, it was really, it was fun. And 
Yeah, expensive. Yeah, yeah expensive. Um, and it's about play, giving yourself permission mm. to play, find out. Mm. It's like, oh, I look like an idiot. Cool. Look like an idiot. Who cares? Or be numb. Like, it's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> Pick your discomfort. Yeah. You're always going to feel wobbly and strange because you haven't done these things before. Um, so pick which, pick your poison, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know that, right? <laughs> and so they're the choices. They're the choices. Yeah. We stay numb or we feel a bit stupid. We feel stupid. And, but um, isn't that, life. that's all of life though, isn't it? Like this is it. Yeah, this is it. Like we've got to keep pushing. Well, you don't have to keep pushing, but you've got to push beyond what you know about yourself and about everything to experience yeah. magic. Because it's not in that, in us. Yeah. It's not where you are already. Nothing you want is already where you are. Exactly. Yeah. So do you want to name uh, something else? Is there anything else that you'd like well, to yeah, share? I mean, there's stuff around when we're learning to really let go. I mean, can you allow yourself to be held by a partner? So things like um, there's a beautiful activity where you can allow your partner to sit behind you and you set a time for how long you're going to agree to to be held and, and they are going to hold you and lean back onto them and see in how many ways you can actually release and let go of your body being held by another human. And you will be astounded how many of you will lie back and you think that you're relaxed and you go, oh, my God, why am I holding my shoulders like that? And you go back again and there's a lot to be learnt about letting go when we allow ourselves to be held. <clears throat> um, and if you don't have a partner, you can do it up against a wall and experience the layers of your muscles letting go. Um, the other thing I was going to say is take an inventory of where you are holding. What are all of the things that you are holding onto inside of your life? It'll be a variety of things that you're holding in your body. Actually, I've got a sore back that really stops me from you know, letting go, or I'm on medication and I feel like that really messes with my mind. There'll be mm. things in the body and then they'll be like, I'm holding this piece around work, I'm holding this piece in our relationship, I'm holding this bit around, you know, my mum's sick in hospital. There's lots. Um, and seeing that down on paper gives it an invitation to come out of the psyche and out of the body into like, all right, these, this is what it is. And from that place, like what I would do is like, all right, I'm going to park these four mm. today and I'm going to go into and do my erotic embodiment. Or it's like, actually, you know what, today I'm not parking any of these. You're all coming with me. Boom. And off I go. But I'm choosing it. It's like uh -huh. a different way of, of, yeah, choosing the pieces that we're holding onto rather than just being at the whim. So by naming it, so, let, so by actually naming and seeing and knowing what it is that you're holding on, because when we're holding on, we're holding on in our bodies. Is that yes. just so we yeah. so I'm, yeah. And so when we're holding on, we're obviously not able to. Let go and the, experience. Pleasure, uh, sexuality. Rod okay, yeah. right. That's, that's something I know everyone listening is going to go, oh, my God, I, I of course. No, I did think that because when I think yeah. about when I'm feeling in a state of like heightened state and I've been rushing around to then go there and there's so many things firing, yeah. then I'm not in a state to be able to let go and surrender. But to, right. but to actually have it on paper so we can see. So would you then go and um, then go and do an erotic practice in, before you then went into the bedroom or wherever you're going to go? Yeah, yeah. Or the just... The what? Yeah, the kitchen. Wherever. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that garden. <laughs> sure. So you, this this is where we kind of start talking about stress and how the body holds stress, essentially. Mm. So is that piece around can you activate your parasympathetic nervous system a little bit before going into play, into your, you know, sexual expression in a partnership mm. or yourself? So meditation, the pieces that you might already do, meditation, um, breath, uh, breath that allows that, parasympathetic um, arm of your nervous system to be activated? Um, can you take care of a bit of self-massage, you know, first? Mm. Simple things like breathing and massage before connecting with a partner, amazing. Mm. You get yourself seven out of ten ready because how often do you start a, like a sexual kind of thing in a partnership and it's like, oh, God, I just love a massage actually. <laughs> Your body, your body needs something, and and it, and they're like, yeah, all right, cool. We always start this with a massage, like, 
<laughs> which is fine, but um, that's part of taking responsibility for your own pleasure. It's like, all right, how can I get myself kind of seven out of ten ready mm. instead of rocking up at a cold hard zero and expecting that other person to do everything to ignite me? And then resenting them for not doing and what you... Not, that's right, because you haven't bothered taking the time with yourself first. That's super important. I mean, you know, we always talk about self-responsibility and this is just another, it's another reminder that yeah. everything we're talking about is responsibility, self-responsibility, self-responsibility to know what we like, to be able to um, be able to communicate rather than assuming that our partners know what it is that we want. I mean, all of this stuff actually we're talking about, I've experienced this in your sessions with you and, and I'm realising now how far I've come in the work we've done because my ability to communicate, you know, going back to that piece that you were sharing about being fully held, you know, and I've shared this in another conversation, but for anyone that hasn't heard, you know, I had an incredible session with you where you full, I've never been held the way you held me, but boy, that requires so much vulnerability. But now what that I'm seeing now, what that's allowed me to do is to be fully held by my partner but I'm going to do that I'm going to and I think for anyone listening I'd encourage you to do that because it is it's 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 extraordinary what can come from that it's that yeah. vulnerability I mean yes it's a letting go but it's so much vulnerability yeah and take turns like don't assume that you're the only one that needs it like you both need to practice being held and when we can practice holding our partners, it helps them dissolve any parts of that holding on that they have as well. And I think in hetero couples, like if you're um, a woman and you're with a man, there's lots of assumption that men, you know, have a responsibility to really take care of us. When we go, I have, we both have a responsibility to take care of ourselves and one another. Everyone can be a bit freed up. Mm. So as much as you need to free up, part of you doing that is you know allowing yourself to hold them as well um because i think that can sometimes get missed big time mm. and um so what if you have a, a partner who's a lot bigger than you yeah so um like sitting up against a wall and putting mm. like cushions in your lap it might mean that you just have his head like resting in your lap mm. and the whole let it go is like through his neck and shoulders and head and you might hold on to the base of his head a little bit mm. or allowing his torso to lie on your torso. Make sure you're supported by pillows. So where you're sitting now, you know, if you put all of that pillow structure down on the ground, make sure that you're really comfy and, yeah, hold just his torso or have him laying on across your body like this like a baby hold well, that would require i'm imagining for anyone listening that would require a lot of vulnerability for a lot of men would find that but what oh, i'm just like i'm really excited now to mm. do that because i'm like wow what could open up from that because i agree i agree that it's not the it's not for us to be held by men. i mean it's beautiful beautiful and important and necessary and yes beautiful and but to be able to, I know how beautiful it is for me, but to be able to do that for him and for anyone listening, to be able to do that for your partner, how that can also create that deeper connection, the vulnerability within. I mean, totally. yeah, I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's a good and, one. you know, a man with a well-rested nervous system can last longer. So that's really good. I listened to that, yeah, I shared with you before. That yeah. video that you did on um, helping men last longer, guys last longer, and it was, it was so, we may as well, you may as well, do you want to just share now? Because I thought it was awesome. Sure. Yeah. Look, I really, a lot of, a lot of folk have um, just really tightly wound pelvises, pelvic floor muscles, and experiencing stress and anxiety of daily life. And as for a lot of those who identify as men, it's very difficult to place that anywhere else. So they hold tension in, in that groin area. Um, and it's about releasing that. It's about really learning to hold and like have an erection and have a relaxed pelvis at the same time. And unfortunately, we spend a lot of our lives um, with tension in the pelvis and then an erection is reliant on having tension. So yeah, it's retraining the whole pelvic area to, to let go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, in a nutshell. 
that's what it was about. Can you just share a couple of things that you shared about actually how yeah. to support men? Yep. And therefore so, the partnerships and... Yeah. Um, again, holding an awareness for the both of you that that's something that you would like to look at um, improving or changing inside of your sexual connection, putting it out on the table, having a conversation, mm. um, create safety. Yeah. When, when something is disclosed, it's inherently more safe than something that's been done privately, you know, mm. disclose it. Even though it feels more difficult to say the things, it will create a container of safety between the two of you if you yeah. have that type of relationship yeah. Yeah. already. Um, and then just like what I would do around like Kegels. So if you're a woman, you probably know what Kegels are and it's about um, locking up and stopping like that, the, those muscles that stop us from doing a wee and then letting go when we want to continue the wee stream. Well, men have the exact same thing. And the... Um, a gap between the balls and the butthole is like uh, the perineum and that often has lots of lots of tension so it's about doing um kegels like men can do kegels so you squat down and experience yourself turning on and off that muscle mm. and you want to build elasticity there so letting go and going oh wow is that me letting go hold on i'm, ha I'm holding on a lot of men can't tell the difference between when they're holding on and letting go yeah, wow. so the, that practice of holding up tight and then pushing out and down will help you identify when you are relaxed and when you are holding on and then it's doing that um coupled with lots of breath work so essentially it's learning to pull breath into your belly um, on the in breath and letting the breath dissolve on the out breath um, and and breathing down into the pelvis to help it relax as well so there's a few moving parts to it and it does take practice but if you can start training your your perineum and your pelvic floor to relax while you have an erection, that's a really good step to um, yeah, being more in control when you're penetrating. Um, and those, those big belly breaths when you are um, during penetration can really, really help as well. So a lot of us hold our breath and mm. go for it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, do the breathing. Some people are afraid that you're going to lose your erection while you are breathing and you will sometimes. You're not broken. You didn't just break your dick. Mm. You get it back. <laughs> and what I love is when you shared that the importance of actually having that open communication and the safe place yeah. for your partner or your husband to, yeah. to be able to explore that so they don't feel, a sh they don't feel shame or discomfort when that happens yeah. because it's quite yep. possible it will happen it's like name it and then when it <laughs> happens it's like oh there we go but then yep. you can come back from that as you said you know it's not like yeah. that's the end of it no that's right make it playful it's not the mm. end and commit to just exploring mm. so it's where you start talking about things like get agenda off the table you know we all enter sexual connection with so much agenda like it goes like this it's a script it's the mechanics you give me a massage and then I give you head and then you roll over and then I give you this and then we penetrate for three or seven minutes and it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I mean, that sounded boring. really boring. And but that's the reality, especially in long-term connections. That's what happens. You know, we do what works and we tolerate a version of, you know. An agenda. Media. A sexual agenda. An agenda, yeah. And... So when you can take that agenda off and go, okay, we've both set an intention to get playful around what might help you last longer, um, let's do some of the exercises. All right, I'll help you. I'll, um, you know, get you to a, um, we could do a whole nother talk on this, the arousal scale. I'll get you to a six or so on the, on the scale and then you do the breath, right, and I'll keep you at a six and you do the breath. It's train one another. It's the same as training your G crest for internal pleasure. It's the same thing that a, a cock owner can do to last longer. Practice. Can we can we have another can we have another yeah. conversation? That'll be our yeah. next conversation. Yeah. Because what I mean, essentially, it's just building up that creative life force, isn't it? Yeah. To be able to you and also to be and spreading it, we keep it 
focused on one area of our body. So energy center one, it's like that's where all the life force belongs. No, it belongs everywhere. Mm. The practice of that breath and some of the other amazing activities you can do are about spreading life force. And it's like, oh, wow, I can have orgasmic sensations in my heart. What? I can feel like what it's like to be orgasmic in my brain and in my pineal. What? doesn't just belong in the genitals like and and that's another skill of this lasting situation it's all really really pelvic focused Mm. part of releasing the pelvis helps you release sensation to move to other aspects of your body bring it up bring it up so for females who identify as females what can apart from kegels what what else can females do what else can we do to open that up um, as in more sensation internally. Yeah, and so for, we, for the life force to be yeah. able to, for that energy yeah. to be experienced in our heart and pineal and head. Yeah, so you know Dr. Joe's breath. Yeah. Yeah. So coupling, um, coupling, how do I explain Dr. Joe's breath? You're better at explaining that than well, me. Well, essentially but. it's like pulling the energy, using your breath from the, um, from the perineum and, and, and imagining and visualising the energy moving all the way up through your throat and up to your pineal. Yeah, that's it. So coupling that with masturbation. Coupling wow. that, yeah, with arousal. So um, this is what I was saying before about, you know. I wonder what Dr. Joe would think of that. <laughs> love it. Like it's, yeah. Um, uh-huh. well, <laughs> oh, yeah, these short, sharp kind of seven-minute mm. masturbation sessions that we have, it's exchanging those for, okay, I'm going to get myself to an eight, seven or an eight. So one is like nothing happening, 10 is an orgasm. So I'm going to get myself to seven or an eight and then stop and do the breath instead. So I'm going to pull up, pull the energy up, feel the breath, um, even run my hand up that meridian centre, right? Right and set the intention to allow that energy to move up to my third eye or my crown or into the pineal and get you start to feel different things you you just do you just do because you're not focusing everything on the friction you're focusing more on the energy so you can spread okay and coupling that with a different pelvic tilting exercise so if I want to have a, um, orgasmic sensations without touching my body, I know exactly how to move my pelvis and how to breathe to have an orgasm where I haven't touched my genitals. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing work with you for a long time. <laughs> like I want that. Yeah. I'm sure anyone listening is gonna be like, really? That that is. That's possible. It's you can do. It's totally possible. But this is the thing. This is the power of prioritizing this play, mm. prioritizing this lens in your life, acknowledging you're allowed to, getting a little bit silly, learning to let go. Mm. You know, yeah. learning to go. Oh, this is my life, and I've got this capacity. And we hear people say, "Oh, I'm a multi-orgasmic this and that, and energetic this and that." And I used to think, oh, that's so annoying. Like, you guys, can you just shut up about that? And I was saying that because I couldn't do it and I didn't know how. Mm. And then I learnt and then you just realise you can. It's available to all of us. Available for all of us. You know, Mm. no one's missing out. You're not broken. We can all play like this. No, it's not like they have it and I don't have the capacity. They're all special and I don't have that. I've got the missing, I'm missing that piece. I think that applies to lots of people. It does. It does. And I, that's why I love, like, when I speak to mums in particular, it's like, you know, I had these two babies. My pelvis was ripped to shreds after a big baby and a botched Caesar and a broken, you know, my bladder didn't work. I had no sensation, all this stuff. And I'm like, if I can now do what I do there with my pelvis, after that, it's like you can too. Like mm. you can, too. and the same with sexual trauma. You know, There's we can. Plenty of people that have experienced sexual trauma that are sexually liberated. Plenty. Yeah. yeah. 
And often I think, would, you, would I be right in saying, not right, but that a lot of that leads to sexual liberation, like full sexual, yeah. when you've experienced that, the, the, yeah, the polarity of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can, yeah, you do the work to heal it and to unpick it and to be with it in ways instead of ignoring it. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> There's a fair bit here for people to take away. And for me... I I know. Thank you for the reminders. So yeah. good. And I know for everyone listening, there will be, there will, they'll either going to be taking copious notes or there'll be, a, there's going to be ahas like yes. it has been for me. Um, so you are super busy and present on social media, but how else can people connect with you? Um, how pe can people work with you? Are you yeah. open for that or are you completely chockers now? No, I'm open uh, for. So I'm doing a, I don't know when you're going to release this combo, but I'm doing a mini masterclass. It's a two-hour workshop on a Saturday morning. So um, I'll invite the, the Good News Guide people to that. It's on the 19th of September. I don't no. think it'll be. But you know what I will do? What I will yeah. do is I'll do a post on it before that because, no, this, I don't, I, I think it's going to be released in four or five weeks. Uh, so. Okay. Well, then I'll probably have something else by then. Um the other place is come to the Orgasmic Mama um, Facebook group. And, yeah, I'm starting a membership where you can come in for a very low amount every month. And I do monthly training. So it'll be like this, but specific to your examples and, and what everyone in the membership wants to learn. Um, that's the best way to keep this up front. It's yeah. gentle but enough to keep it on the burner rather than not on any burner at all. Mm. So I would definitely recommend that. So we'll put, we'll put that link underneath this video for sure. Yep. And yep. Um, did I read that if people attend that other um, workshop that then that's also their first monthly? No. no? Yeah. Okay. So I will, I'll definitely post it. So it's not, yeah. it won't apply by the time this conversation is filmed. So the orgasmic mama on Facebook and Instagram, there's so much content. And yes. I love, like, you do, is it Tuesdays that you answer questions that are, yes. that, yeah? Tuesdays on, on Instagram, yeah. And Neosoma Sex Coach for everything else. That's where. Yeah. So if people want to do one on one with yeah. you or couples? Yes, yes. Oh, I've just taken on some awesome new couples and, yeah, it's amazing. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they don't know what their life's going to be like in two months or six weeks or a month. Uh, that was really great. I loved, I love that. That was cool. I loved that. Mm, thank you. And so next time I'm going to remember, I'm going to go and write it down. Next time we're going to talk about the scale of arousal. Great. Arousal scale and, and the actual games and practices and activities that you might want to do inside of your Play. Yes, please. Yeah. I'm saying yes, please for me and yeah. everyone watching. Yes, please. Great. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank we'll, you. I'll be seeing you for my session later in the week. Great. Love you. Love you. I hope you took heaps of nuggets away from that juicy conversation with Tamika. It's always full of wisdom from her. Even if you just took one thing away and applied it, I can assure you, having worked with her, you will experience profound transformation in your life. It is well worth it. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please press subscribe. Alternatively, you can press the notification button, which will notify you of future episodes. And until next time, heaps of love to you.